Ask the milk. <laughs> Jenkins? Jenkins, you bumbling buffoon. I told you once before. Paul! Ah, the sport of the true gentleman. Arthur, replace that butler. What do you mean I replaced all of my clay pigeons with the only qualified butlers in the village? Then train the damn clay pigeons! You, pigeon boy, who is made of clay, bring me my cane so I can beat you with it. Oh no, it's that time of the week again, isn't it? Peasant, stop treading on my croquet field. You'll ruin the resistance of the surfaces. Oi, you, hands up my prize, poisonous organ. See, now look what you've done. Your hands have fallen off and they're sullying my immaculate grounds. Have him taken away. Arthur, you'd better find a way to motivate these new clay pigeon butlers or it'll be you on the catapult next. Right, which of you muck-dwelling mucus-filled pustules is up first? Dear Murloc, why does Sanger Marsh look like shroom country? What exactly were the game designers on? Ha ha ha. Are you implying, you wonderfully wondrous worthless whelp, that there could possibly be any narcotics references within the world of Warcraft? Diabolical, preposterous, have him loaded into the catapult. Zangamarsh is quite obviously not inspired by anything at all. The real reason behind Zangamarsh is in fact that it is based on a real life area. Now you're looking at me funny. Stop that or I'll have your eyes on a kebab. It's the only area and graphic designers with Blizzard and Damon are in fact only two inches tall. They're all shrunk in a mysterious and hilarious disaster involving a gnome shrink ray. It was later turned into the classic movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Murloc, starring me as the Murloc. Before devouring the entire worthless design team, which of course explains why Blade's Edge is so mind-numbingly horrible, they did that one last with the work experience guy. You see, they had the chance to photograph Farmer Giles' mushroom farm, but of course, from their scoot perspective, it was huge! Sadly, as they moved on to design the ground, at least two of them were eaten by a dormouse. Nasty, nasty state of affairs. Ha <laughs> ha! Ask the Murloc. <laughs> Dear Murloc, I wish to create a magic using class. However, I do not know which is best. Can you please help me choose? How about that load you into the catapults and whatever town you splatter on will be the new class you choose? What do you mean there's no class called Chesterford or Dibley? I will not be trifled with! Have them renamed at what? Fine, fine, I shall use your layman's peasant speak. As disgusting as it sounds to my ears. <laughs> the clear answer to this would be, of course, the Hunter. Far and away the best magic user in the game, but Hunters have now been banned from the game for mad sploits, so this is not a valid choice. The difference between the classes is quite clear. Priests are your primary DPS class with such amazing abilities to smite and inner fire. Warlocks can heal using health stones and life tap, and mages can blink. Sometimes behind you. I'm not entirely certain as to the purpose of mages, really. I hear they make good quassels. What I look like to you, the class guru, get off my lawn. Jenkins, pull! Ask the milk. <laughs> Yes, indeed. The sounds of Captain Dan and the Scurvy Crew. All you real swashbucklers put your hooks in the air. And all those without a sense of humour, well, we just don't care. You listen to Blue, please, here on Wow Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. All right, we have approximately 38 minutes. I do apologise for my ISP issues today. Fortunately, the interview will not be broadcast through my computer, so this shouldn't be a problem. I hate Virgin Media. I am going to say this on air right now. Virgin Media, Richard Branson, you suck and must fall down a well full of very angry, angry mice who will devour you from the outside in slowly and quite amusingly. Die. Thank you. And if you think I'm paying my ass pill, pee bill this month, you've got another bloody thing coming. Right, okay. One thing to say before I go on. If you do listen to the Weekend Report tonight, which I would strongly recommend, that's after the Nihilum interview, after Octel and Hordak, kicking in right after that. The Terpster song this week is sadly sung by me. Yeah, I got roped into it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But if you want to hear my dusset tones, or whatever the hell the phrase is, then tune in to the Weekend Report directly after Octel and Hordak tonight. Schedule's on the front page, wcradio.com. Right, let's get back on with the WoW stuff. WoW stuff's always good, we like that. Hybrid classes, something of an area of contention in everything. I mean, we go all the way back to Dungeons & Dragons, where hybrid classes started getting basement virgins a little bit uppity. And like, well, well, yeah, they can do this and this and this, and I can only do this. And I'm a, I've always been a pure class. I've always played pure classes. I'm talking mages, warriors, 
you know, priests. Anything that's got one soul role that does well. Not the jack of all trades, but the master of none. The master of one trade. And there ain't no jack here. So. Now, in other RPGs, that kind of works. The whole jack of all trades idea. I'll tell you where it doesn't work, though. And that's right here. It doesn't work. At least in the sense of endgame raid content. Which is, let's face it, and we said it time and again, and I still believe it to this very day, the most important element of WoW is the endgame raid content. And if you've got a bone to pick with that, then by all means, let me know. So that's what I believe. And that's what I'll stick to until the day I die. Now, the problem is, with that, why is that an issue? If you have a jack-of-all-trades class, then why on earth should I take you to an endgame raid encounter? Why take the jack when I can take the master? What's the point? It's all about this whole min-maxing idea. Min-maxing became a huge issue around AQ40 and Naxxramas specifically because encounters required you to have exactly the right kind of raid setup. So you had people going in there and they would go in with these classes. You know, these classes specifically. And there wasn't really all that much room for hybrid. Especially not hybrid specific builds. It's like, you take Arrested Druid and Arrested Druid is a good healer. And it has combat res. Okay, that's cool. And it can do various other nifty things. It's got a nice buff. So you'll take a Resto Druid. Whether you take that many Resto Druids as compared to uh, Holy Priests, though? Nah, not so sure. Now take Feral Druids. And how many Feral dru Druids did you honestly take into Nax Ramus? And if you did take many Feral Druids in, how far did you get? Now, it's alright, fine and good, taking a token Feral Druid. Maybe for leader of the pack, a reasonable buff for a melee group. However, did you take them seriously, and were they a part of your min-max strategy? I would hazard a guess as to no. The reason for that is obvious, because Feral Druids didn't used to be comparable DPS to rogues, and they didn't used to be comparable tanks to warriors, so why bother taking them? The same as arguing, you know, why take a hunter? At least at this point in time, you still got a similar problem with the Hunter. The odd thing about the Hunter is, the Hunter isn't a prime... It's not really a primary DPS class, but it's not really a hybrid either. It's just mediocre. It's supposed to do damage. It's a ranged damage class. But then again, there already are ranged damage classes. Mages, Warlocks. Ranged damage classes, which are better. And do better DPS and have more utility in a raid. Which is why people aren't taking Hunters these days to raid encounters. Now that's an issue, but well, the issue we're dealing with is hybrids. Now, there used to be the whole jack-of-all-trades idea, and now that's not the case. They've changed them around, and in my opinion, they have done a very good job of doing so. And let's specifically look at why I believe that. Okay, so, let's take an example. Hybrid class. First hybrid idea. Let's have a look. Uh, Druid is the most obvious choice. Now, Druids, great tanks now, on a par with Warriors. Better for tanking certain encounters than warriors are. Our main tank is a druid, and I have no doubts that we will be kicking ass and taking names with him. Yep. Now that's fair enough. What about DPS? For DPS, they're great as well. But that's okay. I mean, we don't really take feral druids as DPS. There's no real point. What they really excel in is tanking. And they now do excel in it, so there's a point in taking them. And what about rest of druids? Well, you've got Tree of Life form, which gives you a very, very unique perspective on healing. And their heals are very powerful. People are actually saying right now that holy priests are out-healed by rest of druids so significantly that holy priests need a significant buff. I've been told that some of the endgame guilds are only running with one holy priest. Now, let's take hybrid specs. Shadow Priest. Before the laughing stock of everything, why take a Shadow Priest's DPS? It pulls aggro, it could be healing. Now it's a case of, oh yeah, we're taking Shadow Priests because they give us mana. Loads of mana. They're a great mana battery and they don't pull as much aggro anymore. So they're great to have in a caster group. They're awesome as part of a group. That's good. What other things have we got? Let's have a look at, obviously, Paladins. who are a hybrid class. Paladins are great at a lot of things now, except, of course, for DPS. And don't say the Paladins are good for DPS. Please do not try and say that with a straight face. Or I will come over there and hit you in the face with a half brick and a sock. And then you'll never have the word straight face again, trust me. I mean, dear God, no, a Paladin is not a DPS class. It never has been. It never will be. Stop pretending. 
However, as a healer, they are great. They're a healer and buffer. A very good healer and buffer class. Their heals are great, their buffs are great. Judgment of Wisdom is genius. And they're actually really good tanks as well now. For multi-tanking, they're second to none. Specifically because of the Captain America shield. And, of course, Consecration and their multiple ways to grab aggro on multiple targets quite quickly. They have multiple target snap aggro, which, aside, of course, from challenging Shout, no one else has. Which gives them great viability. That's a change that's been made. Before, a Paladin was a healer or nothing. Now it does have some viability there. Shamans. Shamans have... While they have had a little bit of a raw end of the deal, they do have some nice things. Earth Shield is great. You can't even dispute that. They've got totems which are more useful. Wrath of Air. That's a great thing. It really, really is. Now let's have a look at, say, melee shamans. People who want to do damage as a shaman. Well, we have a shaman in our raid that, of course, has the Unleashed Rage. Now, if you put that in a melee group, it gives them, what, 10% extra attack power? That's a great buff to have. You can't complain. Especially when he then starts stomping Wind Fury or Grace of Air, Strength of Earth, all his buffing stuff. For, for a melee group, a shaman, especially an enhancement shaman, is great. Really, really great. It does the damage, but it's primarily also a support class. It's like having a look at Arcane Mages, for instance. Arcane Mage. What's so good about an Arcane Mage these days? The answer is quite simple. It's a four letter word, begins with S, ends in W, it's slow. Slow is the reason why it's great. Slow is awesome. Slow works on most bosses. This is a very good thing. Slow is fantastic. It suddenly made Arcane Mages viable to some degree. Now, I've respect out of Arcane. I admit that I've spec back to fire because they fixed it. But Arcane Mages at least do have some utility and they're not completely and totally laughed at. Which is fair enough. What else? Give me an example. Are you a hybrid player? Do you like to actually go in and play a hybrid spec? And are you accepted? In that case, I would suggest you email me at themurloc at gmail.com. That is themurloc at gmail.com. Now, I've got to give Blizzard props for this. I really do. Because they pulled around a what I saw as a completely hopeless situation and turned it into a genuine actual variety. There's still some classes that can use some help. Moonkin, for instance. That 5% crit is nice, but whether or not a Moonkin's worth having, especially when Moonkin pull aggro like there's no one's business, it's difficult. Now, you can look at Moonkin and say that Moonkin needs some kind of aggro reduction. That 5% spell crit is amazing. No two ways about it. I'm not going to dispute that. Cyclone is also a really nice piece of crowd control. However, they really need that aggro sorting out. They're kind of like Shadow Priest used to be. It's like Shadow Priest used to be okay with Vampiric Embrace, like, well, it's a little bit of group healing, but they didn't have Vampiric Touch, which made them mana batches, and they certainly didn't have aggro reduction, and their DPS wasn't all that amazing. Moonkin are kind of in the same situation right now. They've only got one thing going for them, and that's that 5% buff. So yeah, something needs to be done about that, but I really do genuinely believe that they are on the right lines. I really do. Some stuff could use some work. It really could, but that's just going to happen. It's like, say... What is going to be the only problem with this hybrid idea? And someone will turn around, especially if they're playing a pure class, and they will say, the problem is that my pure class is being outmoded by a hybrid class. That can't work. They're supposed to be a jack of all trades. And that's a really difficult balance to strike between the two. How do you do that? How do you strike the balance between being incredibly useful and not outmoding a primary class? And the master of the class, the master of the particular niche should be doing the best out of the lot, surely. It's like saying, right, mages should be your best ranged DPS class. Warriors should be your best tanking class. It's your primary classes. A holy priest you would think would be the best healer. And if that's not the case, then something is wrong. But they're really going in the right direction. I really do feel that they're doing well with it. There's got to be a lot of work to be done. But the principles have been set down in such a way that they have moved completely away from this whole jack-of-all-trades idea because they realized that while it worked outside, it's like, yay, in PvP you can heal, you can, you know, go bear form if you're being hit on by a melee class, you can be a rogue as well. That's great in PvP. Take that into a raid environment and you're suddenly a third wheel. Why bother? There's absolutely no point. 
in you being there and doing that because someone else can do it better and they're more than willing to do it better and they're, to be quite honest, more practiced at it. It's like saying, well, okay, so a druid is better at DPS than I am. I was like, well, no, he isn't, actually. A druid is not better than DPS than I am. Even if the class was better, he probably still won't be able to keep up with me because I know the principles behind my class and I've been playing it since day one. So, I should be better. I'm a primary class. I know my class inside out. I've been playing with it since day one. It's the only character that I've played seriously. I should know my particular niche, and I'm not going to instruct people on how to fill up their roles. Otherwise, no. Absolutely not. But yeah, I'm really pleased, actually. I'm really pleased to see them. Now, my raid composition... We've been getting our raid composition right for Karazhan recently. And it's a difficult one, because min-maxing in a 10-man environment is tricky when you've got so many people with so many different useful specs. And yes, I will take a Shadow Priest. 110% I will take a Shadow Priest. It goes in the caster group. It gets the casters more mana. They can DPS for longer. They can afford to go all out for longer. And that is really important. So my caster group looks great. Melee group, what do I need? Well, my Feral Druid is a tank. And then I'm going to throw all my other stuff in there. I throw my Enhancement Shaman in there. Getting an extra 10% attack power to all Amelia's. My Off Tank is in there as well. They're getting that extra attack power, they're hitting harder, therefore they are building somewhat more Rage. My Rogues go in there. Anything like that, that will go in that group. And then obviously I, throw, I have to throw a Warlock in there for the Blood Packed buff. But it's good. It works. And it's a good use of hybrids. And I know for a fact that other guilds have been using hybrids in a pretty major way. And I'm not going to dispute that it's a really good idea. But there is still some work to be done. No two ways about that. There are certain classes who really are getting the short end of the stick. Rogues and Hunters come as primary examples. I mean, as a mage, I'm having no issues doing the damage and having the utility that I've always had. It's cool. I can do exactly what I used to be able to do. Hunters and rogues, on the other hand, not so much. You know, I don't take a hunter. I don't even have a hunter in my guild. What's the point? What's he going to do? Aspect? Or no, as to aspects. That's not worth wasting a raid spot on. They have a tendency to pull aggro. Their pets have a tendency to go and run around and aggro something that I don't want, so we end up getting ads. They're a really subpar DPS class, and let's face it, they end up stealing all the other loot. Sorry, all the hunters, but really, this is the situation you're in right now. And I am not, by any means, approving of that situation. It does need to be dealt with. It's something that does definitely need to be dealt with by Blizzard, and they need to look at the hunter class very particularly. And they've always had this issue. What, how can we fit the hunter in there? It's a really nice idea, but it just doesn't really work in a raid situation. Remember back in the day, the only reason you take a hunter is because of Trank Shot, and now you don't even need that. Because, of course, newer hunters will not have gone through Molten Core, therefore they do not have that. It's just not going to happen. So a hunter's gone right the way back to square one, the way they were before all of this stuff was put in, of a hunter being completely, totally, bloody worthless in a raid. And hunters are kind of in that ether, that purgatory between hybrid and primary classes, and they just end up being a waste of space. And that needs dealing with, in my honest opinion. And I would assume that most hunters out there would agree. If you do not, though, email me at themurlock.gmail.com. Now, after the break, we have uh, the second win for next week. Yes! Second win! Another 22 minutes to go before the Nihilum interview. Oh, yes. Awesome stuff. Shout-outs coming up. And I'm going to go into a little bit of rap in the forums right now. If you wish to wrap along with this week's thread, it will be posted in the main IRC channel, so get in there. WCRadio.com, click the IRC chat button on the top of the screen, or use your MIRC client to get to IRC.wowirc.com and join pound or hash wow radio. Come here right now, this is Wrap in the Forums. Hide behind the sofa. Enjoy. Enjoy.